I want to speak a little bit about the new covenant and especially to those who feel they have failed in many areas of their lives in the things that they have heard in these days there can be a feeling well I've made such a mess of my life I've done so many things wrong I never submitted to discipline before I was 35 years old I wasted my life I didn't bring up my children right some of them are not converted because of that I did this wrong I did that wrong particularly those of us who are older and then some of you who are young people may say boy I wish I had known all this and um, listened a little more to my parents I've messed up my life is there hope for me and the devil is quick to say no there is no hope for you you are useless you you blown it man the opportunity you had is gone <clears throat> You know, if that's all we have to say from this pulpit, then I'd say the gospel is a pathetic gospel, but it isn't. The gospel gives hope to every single man who is living and woman and child. As long as there's life, there's hope. <clears throat> and no matter how much of a mess you've made of your life in any area, I can say to you in Jesus name, that God can make a new heavens and a new earth out of that rotten earth that you read in Genesis 1 was without shape without form void the bible begins with an earth that has made a mess of itself that's how the bible begins isn't that great the bible doesn't begin with a perfect earth except in verse 1 verse 1 is a perfect earth and verse 2 is a earth that's made a mess of itself and we read there the spirit of god brooded the word is brooded and brooded is the picture of a mother hen putting its wings around the little chicks brooding protecting the spirit of god is pictured like a mother in the very first paragraph of scripture because god is a father and a mother and the spirit of god brooded means like a mother hen Jesus said to Jerusalem how often I would have gathered you like a hen gathered its chicks under its wings so god is brooding over little helpless chicks that are unable to stand on their own feet and unable to walk and readily pray for vultures and eagles that will come and pick them up and the mother hen is there the holy spirit is there to protect us and what we read in the first chapter of the bible is that god can take that shapeless empty dark earth and produce something so beautiful that even when he examines it he says on the last day the sixth day it's very good now the question is whether you have faith for it when you look at the wrong things you did in your life and we all have done wrong things first of all we must believe that if we confess our sins the blood of jesus cleanses us from all our sins and the devil may tell us well there are certain big ones what about those big terrible things where you hurt other people too you know paul murdered some christians can you imagine how he felt when he was having in a meeting and that man's mother is sitting there and he knows he murdered that woman's son can you imagine how he felt when he stood in the pulpit did he feel oh i can't say anything i better go and sit down no in his days of ignorance he murdered that poor mother's child that mother is without a son now because this guy preacher murdered him but he did it in his days of ignorance and he believed in the blood of jesus christ to have cleansed it so thoroughly that it today he could stand up and speak as though he had never murdered anybody that is faith faith is to believe the word of god when it says that the blood of christ romans 5:9 has justified you it means that it is just as if justified means just as if you had never sinned in your whole life 
You know how I stand here today? I believe I speak with authority because I believe in God's eyes I have never sinned for 67 years. That's what gives me boldness. You think I've never sinned? You may think I've sinned. God considers me as not having sinned because I believe in the blood of Jesus Christ. I honor that blood. You may not honor that blood so much. Too bad for you. I honor it. I believe exactly what God says about the blood of Christ. Some of you, you think you're humble when you say, oh, I'm such a sinner. You're not a humble. You're just an unbeliever. You're a man who's dishonoring God because God says something, the blood of Christ has cleansed you, and you say, no, 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 it hasn't. You're a liar, calling God a liar. Stop calling God a liar. Even if you want to be miserable, go and be miserable, but stop calling God a liar and saying the blood of Jesus Christ has not cleansed sins that you have confessed. At least stop doing that. If you want to live your miserable life, go and live your miserable life, but stop calling God a liar. Your life will be supremely happy when you say that God speaks the truth. When he says he loves me, he loves me. When he says that my sins are all forgiven, they're all forgiven. It's the people who keep on saying the devil is speaking the truth. God is a liar. The devil is speaking the truth. God is a liar. They are the people who are miserable. They deserve to be miserable. They deserve to go to hell for glorifying the devil. After all that Jesus did for them on the cross, they still call the devil truthful when he tells them, Oh, you're a terrible sinner. Oh, you have committed the unpardonable sin. Do you know how many people in the world I meet different places? Oh, Brother Zach, I feel I've committed the unpardonable sin. Who told them that? The devil. They keep on believing the devil and they reject what God's word says. Well, they deserve to be miserable until they will humble themselves and say, God is speaking the truth. And the devil's a liar. That's all you got to say. I'll tell you something. If you don't learn anything else in this conference, just learn this, that God speaks the truth and the devil's a liar. I've told the devil numerous times, you're a liar. You were defeated by my savior on the cross. You can't touch me. In the early days, he used to harass me so many times because I didn't know my, my authority. I even felt his physical pressure once about 30, 40 years ago. But now, <laughs> he's scared of me. Because I became spiritual? No. Because I just started believing God. He'll be scared of you. The devil will be scared of you. Believe God. He doesn't want people to believe God. We live by faith, not by gritting our teeth and determining. No. What about if you sin this morning? Will the blood of Christ cleanse you? When does it cleanse you? After you've spent one week in remorse? If we confess our sins and we spend one week in remorse, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Where is that? Don't add to scripture. When the Bible says when you add to scripture, you call God a liar. There's a verse in Proverbs that says, don't call God a liar. I say that to you. Because you'd say you're a liar. So it's very simple really. Faith is the secret. You know, one day, some of you who may not listen to me, I hope you'll all listen to me, but if somebody's sitting here who still will not listen after all that I've said, that God can make a wonderful thing out of you, the mess you've made of your life. You, you may be like that earth in Genesis 1-2, shapeless, empty, dark, uh, good for nothing. And I tell you in Jesus' name, Genesis 1 tells you, you can end up as very good and you don't believe it. Okay, what can I do? I can't catch you by the neck and make you believe him and Almighty God won't do that. God doesn't even stop people from going to hell. But he tells you, you have the opportunity to believe right now. And if you trust God, I can tell you in Jesus' name, you will be healthy in spirit, soul, and body. <laughs>